Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. Another day here working on the Dodge again. Uh, and it's a hot one today. We're just getting started in the, what is it? Like two or something? Oh, I gotta watch. It is two. So today we're doing the bushing kit on the rear end, all the control arms. I guess there's a ton of different names. Tension arm, compression arm, yeah, lower control arm. But anyways, um, we're going to work through the driver's side real quick to uh, get an idea of it, and of how it comes apart, and so that way when we are ready to film on the passenger side for you guys, uh, it's a lot more smooth and we look like we know what we're doing. <clears throat> These, this is the bushing kit for just the rear end. And it comes with almost everything, almost everything. It has full instructions and even a couple of extra pieces. Um, but the only downside I think I can think of right now at the moment is that these spacers aren't labeled. At least not, I'm pretty sure they're not labeled. Let me, yeah. I thought they said 51, 53, No, 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 the oh, spacers. The metal yeah. And it was just kind of by chance that I noticed that four of them were different heights than the others because it's just my new differences, you know, so. That's what really made me want to set everything out and get it in order, even with like the part in the vehicle as it as it sits in relation to me right now. So right here, like the picture, first in line is the toe link. We got the knuckle end, and we've got the you know inside. And then all of this, that's the knuckle end of all the, you know, arms we're attaching to it. And you notice this last one does not have a knuckle end bushing. That's this compression link right here. It only gets one end. Uh, this end does not get done. It says it right here, compression link lower arm bushings for knuckle positions are not replaced. And also the uh, lower arm here, you see this spring pocket right in the center. The end of this arm that attaches right there, see that nut and bolt? That is also not replaced. So everything else is replaced except for those two on both sides. Those are also replaced. They just have the pictures up here tension link at knuckle position that's the tension link this is the knuckle position camber link camber link at knuckle position this is the knuckle position so i laid them out in relation to the arms how they sit in the vehicle and then opposite for the other side got all my hardware together and Got the right spacers with the right bushings. Found out even where the pictures show the nuts should go is, if you look, not everything gets a new nut or bolt. Um, but I did go through the parts list and I do have everything they say that I need. I just have extra stuff. No, nah, you're fine. We got jack stands. You're good. Nothing's gonna fall under? Well, except for maybe that wrench. Alright guys, well, I've got bad news for any of you looking to do this. Maybe I just got unlucky. I don't know. But this bolt for this toe arm, this back one, won't come out 
and it's pretty long and it's got a long ways to go still because it goes all the way through this arm there or that part of the you know whatever you want to call this thing K member but uh so it looks like the whole thing is going to have to come out just so we can get these bolts out or you pound a big old dent in it or you cut a hole in it but I'm not doing that look at all these dented back And this upper arm here in the back, you're not getting that out either. Not at all. Not on either side. So there's really no choice. You we you have to drop this whole thing. So that's what we're gonna do. So the way I'm gonna do it is remove this caliper first from the bracket. Then I'll remove the bracket separately um, so the caliper is actually smaller and I can fit it up in there to zip tie it and the caliper's got to come out of the way so you can get the e-brake cable but first we're gonna have to undo these uh, brake shoes get them out of the way so we can get this clip off the end of the cable feed the cable out and then we're one step closer So now that the caliper and brackets out of the way, get yourself a good pair of pliers and rip this son of a There you go. Make sure you don't take pictures. So you don't remember how it goes back. Okay, now, this should just come right off, I heard. Oh, no. Okay. Well. The hub is in the way, but this hook is what was hooked in there. So that's off now, so let's see if we can just get that Allen wrench on the back of the cable and slide the cable out. So that's actually going to be a Torx bit, a T30. Oh good, it wasn't tight. And voila! The housing is really stiff. So, but yeah. Looks like we just gotta take this brake sensor off with a 10 mil back there. Where's it at? Oh, there it is up there. That's a 10 mil. Then you disconnect it from these little clips. Oh, wrong, don't break it. Here we go. Next thing to do is get the shock uh, mount bolts off the top here. There's just two of them and those are 16 millimeters. Then, while he's getting that off, I'll tell you what's next. You gotta get the exhaust off, so that means removing this cross member first. Then we'll loosen up those two clamps right there. Then we'll start at the very tail end of it and pop off the two rubber mounts that are on each side. Why does it have, why can't we just have like a freaking, like an entire lift? <sighs> why? Yeah. I don't know, because the lift ferry hasn't come by here yet. Well, what, why? So, now that we got the exhaust out of the way, you used a little bit of tape there to mark up the alignment so we go back in the same spot when we put it back together I'm gonna have AJ put it in neutral and we'll flip this drive line around 180 degrees and 
get that last bolt. Uh, the one thing I notice is that these lock washers are on the rubber. They're all going this direction, but the lock washers stay on the rubber. So, just something to note. Or, well, actually, I'll just let you guys know. I think what we're probably going to do is just... go down and let it fall out on its own as the cross member comes down. One more bolt to break loose here. And they are tight. Oh, you can hear it. Oh yeah, you can hear the crunch. This thing wants to come down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, spring pressure pushing on down on this too, so. Oh god. We're gonna have to go a little slow. Is it gonna fall? Like as soon as it as soon as that one comes off? Well, we have to get all four off at the same time. We're gonna have the jack under it. Okay. But uh first things first, let's get this off and get a jack. Okay. So we've got it down, and for the most part, putting it on the diff, the jack right on the center of the diff, kept it really center. I mean, it was really nice. So now we've got to get the e-brake disconnected. All right, so it took me a minute to figure it out, but I figured out how to disconnect the e-brake, maybe, hopefully. It's part of it so far. But if you get the camera in here, in this hole, there's a tab. And uh, inside there, that tab's got to be pushed out. So then we'll go like this and pull that all the way out and clip it on here back up. Don't stop it. I'm not. Okay. And then we'll put this. So we'll pull it all the way out like that. Clip it right there. Doesn't take much. You don't want to damage the wire. But then, if you watch right here, after pushing out that tab or prying over, open the tab, you can slide it forward. Hey, we did it! And that's one. We have to take that whole thing off? Well, uh. <sighs> Viola. <laughs> Viola. <laughs> hey, we did it. You did it. Whoa. Just don't get yourself whipped in the face. Yeah. I'm free. Viola. <laughs> All right, the diff is out. The diff, the rear cross member. Technically the diff is out too. The diff is out too. Now, now we can get this bolt off. And this bolt wasn't gonna come out either. Same for the other side. So it had to come out. Pretty much like, how many hours? Like six hours of work now? Well, yeah, I mean, but we work at home, though. This isn't like working at a shop. It's a little different. Shop would probably would take like We take days. a lot of breaks here at home. <laughs> I eat. I just sit down. Well, that was a lot of work, um, which is why I think we're going to cut it here for this video. 
this is going to be one part, obviously. We're going to do two more parts, I think, is the plan. Uh, the second part will be tearing it down, cleaning it up, and then tearing out all the old bushings, cleaning out all the surfaces. And um, then the third part will be uh, installing the, all the new bushing kits and getting it back up in the car. And then, of course, probably some burnouts, driving around and sharp corners and stuff. But um, I want you guys, if you're interested in that and you want to see those, I want you guys to subscribe. Go ahead and hit the notification bell, please, because that helps out a lot. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, thanks again for getting me over a 1,000 subscribers. That's awesome. Very awesome. I'm excited. Uh, and I also have some new camera equipment coming so uh, maybe my videos will be a little bit better but we'll see um thanks again guys have a good one this next category is called Ooh, dangerous hold on leo hold on leo don't just walk up and try and take it oh that was that was what i was talking about that's that was it <laughs> No, oh, that was totally close. It was better than this. Hey, my second try was, was better. Killing it, right? It's $10 shoes. Not old man.